guys. Today we are going to talk about blood. We're going to talk about what's inside of blood that makes it so incredible. I'll be using these giant microbes and we'll also be creating a model of blood in a tube. And there's a handout that goes with this that you should make sure to print. It's in the description of the video down below. Um, this handout is actually double sided. So you can either print it as two pages like I accidentally did, or you can print it double sided, but it will really help to have this handout before you look at the video. Also in the description of the video, you'll find information if you wanna get any of these giant microbe models of blood, or if you wanna get the supplies to make your own blood model. We're gonna talk about red blood cells first. And I actually love the giant microbes model of a red blood cell because it looks really like what an actual red blood cell looks like. So they're round, but they're also sort of flattish. They're sort of like a donut, but flexible so that they can fit through the smallest blood vessels in the body. So we usually call them red blood cells, and you may have never heard their scientific name, but their scientific name is erythrocytes. So say the word erythrocytes. Really important to learn how to say the terms and erythro means red and site means cell so erythrocytes literally just means red cell what they look like is sort of a flattish disc they really are red and we'll talk about why they're actually red but they're like a flat disc not quite hollow in the center but they are thinner in the center and for their size, I want you to take your fingers and bring them as close together as you can without touching. That's about a millimeter. Well, cells are a thousand times smaller in terms of their measurements. So imagine getting your fingers a thousand times closer. At that point, they're, they're touching, really. Um, they're measured in micrometers or micrometers, which is this unit right here. And a red blood cell is between six and eight micrometers in size or millionths of a meter in size. So let's talk about what red blood cells do. They are super important, but they're also very basic. They have a really pretty simple job. They just carry oxygen. Um, for the most part, to all of your cells. So every cell in your body needs oxygen to breathe, essentially, and these guys carry oxygen to all of them. They also carry away the carbon dioxide waste. So they're relatively dumb. They actually don't have a nucleus. They don't have to be very smart. Basically, it's just a big blob of hemoglobin. So you should probably write down hemoglobin. That's the protein. Hemoglobin is the protein that's all through the red blood cells that picks up the oxygen and drops it off and picks up the CO2 and drops that off at your lungs. Now, I'm going to make a model representing the components of blood, and I actually already put these in there. Um, but what we're going to use for the red blood cells are these little red beads. They're obviously not a perfect representation because they're hollow in the middle and they're not very flat. But when we're making a model, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be a decent representation for us to remember what it's like. So I'm going to fill it a little less than halfway with these red beads because our blood, it varies. Somewhere between 35 and 55% of our blood is red blood cells, but around 45% is a healthy amount of red blood cells in human blood, typically. Also, up at the top under red blood cells, go ahead and write down RBCs because sometimes they're just referred to as RBCs. And we're now going to talk about white blood cells and let's do the same WBCs because sometimes you just write them as that. So in my giant microbe model, here is a white blood cell. And you can see it's not really bigger than a red blood cell, but it should be. These are much bigger than red blood cells, typically two to three times the size. Their scientific name is leukocytes, and leuk means white, site means cell, so they're colorless uh, unless you stain them. And that word leukocytes might make you think of leukemia. Leukemia is actually a blood disease of your white blood cells, a cancer of your white blood cells. So what they look like, first of all, they vary. They're not all the same, um, but they are colorless. That's something that's true of all of them without a stain. And they all have inside of them at least one nucleus. 
Um, so I'm going to say one or more. Some of them actually have multiple nuclei. And then the other thing you should know is that they stain purple. So when we look at a slide with white blood cells, they're actually going to look purple, but that's because of the stain that we add to them. In terms of their size, they're about twice as big. They vary in size because there are different kinds, but somewhere between 12 and 17 micrometers. So at least twice as big generally as a red blood cell. And that's really because they have to have this nucleus inside of them. They're smarter than red blood cells. The nucleus is sort of the brains of the cell and they have to be able to do a lot more. So my one word summary of what they do is they protect and they protect against all kinds of pathogens. So that's viruses, that's bacteria, that's fungal pathogens, fungi, but they also protect us against our own cancer cells. So they're constantly seeking out and trying to find any cells that have gone rogue, cancer cells, and they destroy, they protect and destroy. They can even go after tiny microscopic worms inside of you, um, or large worms if you have that kind of an infection. Now how I decided to represent these in our blood model is with these little puff balls. And you can see they are white because that's the true color of a white blood cell. And they actually vary in size. And I did that on purpose because white blood cells vary in size. So these are called pom-poms. White blood cells, though, make up less than 1% of our blood total, very little. So even though I think these pom-poms are really cute, I shouldn't put more than one or two into the tube. And you can see one is a little smaller than a red blood cell. So again, it's not a perfect representation. I think I'll just put this one in. It's slightly bigger than a red blood cell, and it takes up about 1% of the tube, maybe even slightly more. The next component of blood is a platelet. You have probably heard of platelets, but you may not have heard their scientific name, which is thrombocytes. So again, say thrombocytes. Thromb means clot and site means cell. So these are clotting cells. And I included a diagram. They look a little different when they're not doing their job and when they are. So when they're not, they're just kind of flat. They're actually named for their flatness, plate like a plate. They're little, so this should be half to a third of the size of a red blood cell. But in this model, it's not. It's, it's a little bigger. But when they need to do their clotting job, they stick out these little stringy bits, which help them stick to each other to allow that clotting. So they're only two to four micrometers in size. And for my one word summary, I'm definitely going to say clot. So they let your blood clot so that you don't bleed out. So they clot your blood when you're cut. If you have a little paper cut, the reason it closes up is because of your platelets. You can actually sort of see them in a scab, but also when you're hit hard and you have a bruise, that bruise is clotting inside of you. So if you have the disease hemophilia, hemophilia, a platelet clotting disorder, you could bleed to death without even having a cut on the outside. Um, you could bleed to death on the inside, just from the blood coming out of the blood vessels and you have internal bleeding. Now these are small, so I decided to represent them with glitter. They're actually colorless, so this doesn't need to be red, um, but I had some red glitter. These are obviously smaller than they should be because they're only half to, half to uh, a third of the size of a red blood cell. But we're gonna use glitter, and they make up less than 1% of the blood, just like the white blood cells do. So I'm basically just gonna take a little pinch of glitter. This is gonna be kind of messy and put that into my tube. Wow, hopefully you can do a better job if you're making your own model. So there you go, a little bit of platelets, very small amount. Now we come to our last component of blood. It actually does not have a special scientific name. It's just plasma. That's the common name and the scientific name. And this one is not a solid at all, it's a liquid. Um, a yellow liquid, and so in the size, we're gonna just put Na, not applicable, because there's not really a size to it. It's like water or something. Um, it's almost all water, actually, mostly water. And my one word summary of what this does is carry. 
So think about a river and all the stuff floating through a river. The stuff would be the different kinds of cells and the platelets, but it also carries, it's going to carry the cells, but it also carries proteins like hormones. And it's going to carry food, so all the nutrients from the food that you take in. And it's going to carry waste away. All of your cells are basically kind of pooping and peeing all the time, and it's going to carry away the waste that they make to the kidneys. And to represent this, because it's a yellow liquid, it's mostly water, I just have water and a basic yellow food dye, and I'm going to color my water with a little bit of the food dye, just a couple of drops, and then I'm going to add this to my tube. So the representation in my model is yellow water, and plasma makes up the majority of your blood, a little more than half, so around 55%. So this is our final model of blood, and if you want to make your own and you don't have the supplies, in the description of the video I said where to get these different supplies. So you can see the platelets, the glitter, the red blood cells, quite a few of those, your little white blood cell, and then the plasma, the yellow in the tube. You could also come up with different materials to model the blood. And if you're one of my students, you're going to make your own model, and you're going to submit a picture of it, and you get to keep this to remind yourself of what's in blood. We are going to skip the bottom of this for now and go to the back. So there's a representation of blood, and you need to label each part. So figure out what that is and label it, what this is, what this little bit is, and remember to also label the liquid. We're also going to look at blood under the microscope. So if you are in the classroom and you have a microscope and a blood smear like my students, some of you have, you should look at it and you should look at it under the 400x magnification, which means you use the 40x lens or the 40x objective, and you're going to get 400x magnification. The blood will be 400 times bigger um, in your view than it really is. Okay, if you are at home like me, or you don't have access to a microscope and slides, you're going to just look at the picture that I display. And this one uses the 100x objective on the microscope, which means it's a thousand times magnified because the eyepiece is a 10x. So these cells are a thousand times bigger in appearance than they are in reality. Go ahead and look at this slide and then draw what the red blood cells look like in this circle. Notice how many you see and how small they still look, even with a thousand X magnification. It's kind of crazy. Then look for the purple blobby ones. Those are the white blood cells. Draw a couple of white blood cells here and make sure to label them as white blood cells, WBCs, or leukocytes. Finally, look for the platelets, the teeny tiny bits. They're colorless in in your blood, but once stained, you can see some color. Draw a couple of platelets. You can see that they're much smaller than the red blood cells, and go ahead and draw those in here. And finally, note that we can't see the plasma in a blood smear, so you should have labeled the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets, but not the plasma. Okay, the final thing that we're going to do is talk about some amazing facts, some really cool things that you should know about blood. And I've included some pictures at the bottom of this handout to um, just help illustrate some of these facts. So first of all, the bone. I wonder if you know what a bone has to do with blood. Well, bones are actually where blood is made. All blood is made in bones. And... They have tiny blood vessels running all through them into the marrow. The marrow is where the blood is made, and the blood travels out of the bone, um, out of the bone marrow into the blood vessels, and they make a tremendous amount of blood. The next picture represents kind of the lifespan of a red blood cell. So RBCs, or red blood cells, live, we'll say live, for about three to four months. 
And then they break down and they go to the spleen to be recycled because they get um, really beaten up traveling around the body constantly. Which brings us to the next picture. 60 seconds is the maximum amount of time as long as it takes for a red blood cell to travel to and from the heart. So it goes from the heart, it gets pumped somewhere in the body. You know, it could go out to your fingertip, uh, it could go up to your brain, all the way down to your toe, to your kidneys, and then to go back to the heart. It only takes 20 to 60 seconds. And they're doing this all the time for three to four months. They never get a break. And so that's part of why they break down after that period of time. This might be my favorite fact. 80% of the cells in your body are red blood cells. So if you were to randomly pull a cell out of the body, odds are it's a red blood cell. Blood only makes up 7-8% of our body weight, but most cells in our body are red blood cells. I just think that's kind of crazy. The Oh, one thing I should say, that's most human cells in our body. We actually have more bacterial cells in our body than we have human cells. But of the human cells, the vast majority are red blood cells. Then we come to these, and these are the white blood cells. And there are five kinds of white blood cells, and they all have one or more nuclei. So white blood cells are much, much, much more complicated, more kinds, um, they have the nucleus, more jobs, and I included a picture of the different kinds. One gallon represents the amount of blood in a typical human. So each of us has about one to one and a half gallons of blood in our entire body. And it's kind of amazing to me that it's such a small amount, really, given how important blood is. This next one is what makes our blood red. So our red blood cells really are red without needing to be stained. Our blood really is red, and that's because the iron in the hemoglobin is red. And that's why all human blood is red, is because of that. However, not all animal blood is red. Um, some animals don't use iron. So for instance, crabs, some of them use copper and their blood is green. There are worms that have purple blood. So it's whatever that compound is that your species uses to carry oxygen that determines the color of your blood. This last picture is a capillary right here. And capillaries are our tiniest blood vessels. And our red blood cells have to travel single file through capillaries because capillaries are so small. Again, this is a thing that really beats them up and part of the reason why they can only make it for three to four months because they're squeezing through, folding all the time to fit through these teeny tiny blood vessels to go everywhere in the whole body. And over time, that really beats these guys up. They get worn out and they break down. You need to make new ones. We actually make, there's not a place for this, but this is amazing, 17 million new red blood cells per second. And that tells us that that's how quickly those red blood cells are dying. Um, so we lose about 17 million a second and we gain about 17 million new ones a second. And if you give blood, think about how rapidly your bones have to work to make those new red blood cells if you give a pint of blood. And they can do it. They're up to the task of making more all the time, which is pretty amazing. I hope you were able to learn something new about blood today. Um, I love blood. I think it's so fascinating. If you were into it, you can check out the blood playlist. I have some other videos on blood and blood typing, and I'll be making more because blood is just one of my favorite things. It's so cool. So drop me a comment below. Let me know uh, what you learned from this. If you know something else cool about blood, let me know that too. Uh, maybe I can add to my knowledge base. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.